Well, originally, um, when I was 16, I was actually a feminist, and my mother gave me a book called Princess at the Window, and that's how I sort of got involved in uh, counter-feminist or feminist criticism. I mean, that was my first introduction to it. And when I was in my early 20s, I started to post on Sock.Men and talk about basically the issues that men faced. And over time, I went to different men's rights forums and I ended up landing at A Voice for Men. So I've been, a, I've been involved in the movement for about 15 years. Okay. Um, so how does the movement uh, smoke out? What sort of things uh, do they stand for? They stand for essentially bringing um, the issue Excuse me. They stand for compassion for men and boys, bringing compassion for men and boys to the table as a social concern. And what, what sort of concerns that, um, are there out there that uh, men don't have a voice? For? Well, specifically, men don't have a voice when they're vulnerable. Because men are expected to be strong, when they have needs, they're also expected to shut up about them. So when men are suffering five times the rate of suicide, when they don't get the same mental health services, when their health, they, they die seven years earlier, um, when, when they have to deal with not having the same rate of custody of their children, um, when they have to deal with so, the lack of services for domestic violence and, and rape support, that those kinds of issues. Okay. Um, and so does Voice for Men have uh, kind of a mission statement, I guess? Um, I guess uh, our mission statement would be right underneath our logo, which is um, compassion for men and boys. Um, I think some people uh, hearing your voice, knowing that you're a girl and you're a voice for men, might be surprised. Can you talk about that? Um, well, I, why would it be surprising for a woman to have compassion for men and boys? Like, I, I care about, I, I actually care about all people. I just think that right now, vulnerable men, their voices aren't being heard. So that's why I'm interested in this movement. But I'm also interested, I, I have no interest in, in denying that women have problems and issues that they face. But I think that there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a loud volume on those issues. I mean, it's, it's constantly in the news, women and children first, and uh, you know, and the neglect here is for men's issues, so that's why I, this is why this is my focus. Mm -hmm. um, so do you have a, a chapter here in Saskatchewan, and uh, like, are there other people uh, part of the group um, that are here in Saskatchewan? Um, yes, there are other people part of uh, this group that's here in Saskatchewan. We're not really a very, we're not a, uh, a very hierarchical organization. We tend to be quite, quite uh, loose in our organization, so I wouldn't really call it chapters, it's just people who get together and talk about the issues and put up some posters. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so talk about the posters that you have on your website. Uh, well, we have a lot of different posters. The thing is that when you look through those posters, those posters are, if anybody created a poster, we put it up. So, because we're all volunteers, we all do this in our spare time, a lot of the posters, you know, they're not quite as, they're not quite as, um, well, anyway, they're they're just they're they're volunteer work, so they're not as they're not going to look like something that's funded by a government. So the posters are intended to bring across the messages that individuals who created the posters wanted to see sent out there, and it's it's very crowdsourced. Like it's these these this we just get a poster, we put it up. So, so no matter what, if there's a poster created, then you're then putting it on your website. Oh no, we we do vet. For, for hate speech about um, minorities and uh, and women and men. So, I mean, it's not going to be just anything. But, yeah, we, we essentially, this is crowdsourced. This is all individual grassroots effort. Um, now, I was reading a bit about your website. You guys are in support of the men's rights Edmonton group who uh, claim responsibility for some of the posters on the Edmonton University campus. Um, can you talk about why you're supporting the posters that were put up? We're supporting the posters that were put up because they draw attention to the fact that the original posters single out men, uh, all men, as potential rapists. Uh, so you agree with messaging? Sorry, we, yes, we do agree with the message. Um, I guess, why do you believe that the original campaign posters are targeting men? 
because the original Tan Kane toasters are telling men not to be that guy, which mean which suggests that if they hadn't told them, they would be that guy. Okay. Um, would you disagree that there are a way, to, you know, that those cultures are a way to encourage sex, sexual assault victims to come forward and speak? Because um, a lot of uh, sexual assaults go unreported. Um, I would say that they definitely. Uh, they definitely prevent male sexual victims from coming forward and speaking because it pins pins sexual assault as a whole on men. It doesn't speak to them. I mean, if if it was a if it was a campaign in which it was speaking to all victims of sexual assault, it, I think it would be far more far more appropriate. But as such, it excludes female victims of female rapists, male victims of male rapists and male victims of female rapists. So you guys see this as uh, more of a gender problem then, that they're, they're pinpointing that sexual assaults are mainly women as opposed to men, and so you would like it seen on both sides of the coin then? Yes, we would like to see, um, we would like to see uh, an honest look at the statistics about s sexual assault, um, and we would also like to see campaigns that reflect all sexual assault victims. Um, how, how do you guys see this as, um, you know, how can people stop thinking about rape, for example, as a gender problem and start seeing it um, as a whole? Well, the obvious answer to that is to stop having the government fund uh, poster campaigns or individuals that create these poster campaigns that single men out as rapists mm -hmm. and women out as rape victims. Um, I guess some people might say that, uh, you know, sexual offenders most likely are a man. According to the statistics, they are. And, you know, one in every 17 Canadian women would be raped at some point in her life, according to stats. Um, and the flip side isn't true for men. So uh, what do you have to say to people that have been arguing that point? Well, first of all, on the our website, you can see evidence that there are groups of people in the government, or there are, there are groups of people in the government, there are people in the government who are pushing ideological science in the government. So those statistics are actually not correct. And the most recent uh, wide-scale study in the U.S. found that men and women were forced to have sex at the same rates in the last 12 months. In the last 12 months is the most accurate statistics about rape prevalence. So both men and women were forced to have sex at the same rate in the last 12 months, and that is the Center of Disease Control's uh, Intimate Partner and Sexual Violence Survey for 2010. Okay. Um, so what would you have to say to people who find your posters offensive? I would have to say, if they're offensive, why weren't the originals offensive? Why so? Well, because if the reality is, if the posters are offensive because they target, I assume because they are targeting women for a particular crime that mostly women, it's, it, the majority of the, the criminals who engage in that crime are mostly women, exactly the same logic that they're using with the flawed statistics on rape, then the original posters are targeting men. They're targeting men. Um, have you guys had a chance to sit down with the people that made the original posters to, to talk about what you take issue to and maybe um, create a campaign that also speaks to um, men who are victims? I believe that we've already put out camp uh, poster campaigns regarding male victims of rape, but they weren't noticed. So you, you haven't spoken to the people responsible to them? Oh yeah, I've spoken to the people responsible to it for them, but the reality is that again, this is not a hierarchical or hierarchical organization. They they are volunteers and they decide the kind of posters. I mean, the reality is that if we're talking about Men's Rights Edmonton, Men's Rights Edmonton is affiliated with A Voice for Men, so we don't have any oversight over the posters that they use. However, we have had poster campaigns that reflect male victims of sexual assault and they don't get noticed. The um, media doesn't care. And what sort of feedback have you guys had um, since you know, some of your posters have been posted? 
Well, the media feedback has been pretty much negative, um, but the feedback from the community seems to be positive. And what sort of things are, are people saying? Sorry? What sort of things are you hearing from people that, um, you know, are positive feedback that they're happy that you guys are doing it? Well, they're supporting the message of the poster, and I think, uh, I think a lot of people were not very happy with the originals and how they targeted men. And that, and that this new poster sort of brings to light what's wrong with the originals. You see, the real, reality is that if we were to do a genuine campaign to target false accusations, we would probably, instead of just a campaign to bring light to the, to the, um, to the original campaign with, and the problems with it, we would probably do something that was much more inclusive of what, how false accusations occur, because there's not just the woman making the false accusation, often there is also men engaging in vigilante justice based on her word. Mm -hmm. So we would do a full spectrum campaign about all of the problems of, of false accusation and how men and women both contribute to it. Right. Um, I think that's everything I had to ask you. I just want to give you a chance to, to add anything that I might have missed. Um, I just want, well, I guess in conclusion, we are for compassion for men and boys. That's, that is our purpose. And we don't want to exclude women from the table. We want to bring men's voices to the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, that perhaps is maybe a misconception is that you want to, um, not include women, but only simply have a voice for men. But any talking to you, it sounds like uh, it's more of an inclusion and Yes, ultimately, well, the media message is, I think, the reason why the media has its particular focus is that's been sort of the message for a very long time. But yes, I mean, obviously we're inclusive because you're talking to me and I'm a woman. And I've been doing this for 15 years. And what we want most of all is to bring attention to these issues, to be fair to both male and female victims of these issues, and to have, to 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 support and promote an inclusive report uh, an inclusive rep approach to sexual violence and false accusation because it's all the same problem so ultimately what would you guys like uh to, to be done I mean, now that you you have some uh, media attention because of the posters in edmonton um what's the next step we would like people to recognize that false accusation is is a problem in society we would like to recognize that that male victims of female rapists, male victims of male rapists, uh, female victims of female rapists are all, all part of the problem and need to be recognized in poster campaigns. They need to be seen. They need to see their, their victimization. They need to know that they have services. They need to, to be able to feel like society is supporting them. And that is going to do something to really change the problem. I know what you've heard from the media. What I've heard from at least a few sexual assault, female victims of sexual assault, uh, particularly when they see the community of the wrongly accused, there is no person on earth who hates false accusers more than someone who's been an actual victim of sexual assault. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that false accusers exist and they, they make it more difficult for men and women and children who are abused to come forward and be believed and they waste police resources that could be going to genuine victims mm -hmm. so the reality is that that it's the false accuser him or herself who is the problem for the real rape victim the poster drawing attention to the existence of false accusers is not the real problem Thank you.